Hello everyone out there who's watching. This week we've got valve shims to sort out. So, so where I last left the Suzuki was that I needed to change the jets. Well, there were three things that I needed to change. Jets, uh, valve shims and ignition itself. So removing the points and going to an electronic ignition system. So today's job is valve shims. Now the reason I'm doing this first is because there's absolutely no reason or there's no it makes no sense whatsoever to change your jets and your valve shims still be out, you know, it's not going to achieve anything. Changing the jets on its own is not going to make my bike run better or run run how it should run. I mean, there are a number of things that can cause your valve shims to either shrink or expand uh, and all sorts, but in a nutshell, when I measured my valve gaps, they were too much. Uh, the book says that they should be 0.8, that's not 0.8 mil, that's 0.08 mil, I think. Maximum width, so anything from 0.03 to 0.08. Um, mine were 0.13, which, which is essentially one digit too much, it was a 0.1 mil too, too great. Now, those figures may not sound much, you know, in, in the larger, in the greater scheme of things, but it does mean a heck of a lot here. Most of my wear were on the shims on the intake side and not the exhaust valves. So I'm sure that some people can read more into that than I can, but I know what's wrong with it and I know what needs changing. So today's job is going to involve one of these, which is a feeler gauge set. If you haven't come across one of these, you definitely need one of these. I've got one of these as well. Um, it's a digital measuring tool basically and it can read up to two decimal places after a mil and it's brilliant if you have one of these then it's it's perfect for working on bikes obviously you can measure the gaps of things you can measure your ports if you want and then you've got a depth measurer there all sorts now another thing i need for this job i'm looking around the workshop seeing if i can find it it should be around here somewhere ah, it's still there another thing you need is one of these so this is to basically Make your life easier when removing the valve shims themselves, so you don't have to take the cams off and everything. You can just simply use one of these, especially on a GS550. That's the thing. There are all sorts of different setups and, and all sorts. You know, if you're working on on motocross bikes or anything, it's it's going to be different again. Check your bike, but this tool for a Suzuki GS550 is going to make life a heck of a lot easier, especially for me. Now there are people out there who'll buy shim kits you know with all sorts of variations all sorts of pieces and everything you need there if you do that it's going to cost you an absolute fortune if you have the money or if you have you know a need for the valves later on in life and all sorts by all means buy those but if you can work out the measurements for yourself then you can buy individual shims and that'll obviously make life a lot cheaper for you again so so enough talking from me let's look at the bike let's measure the shims see what we need to put there and get to it so basically your first step is you need to measure the gap in between your valve here using feeler gauge what we need to do is rotate this so that it's pointing perpendicular to the actual valve itself I've seen some people saying that you need to have it you know at like a 90 degree angle to the valve and things but according to the GS 550 book and according to a lot of people I've spoken with and who have done this before and when I've been doing it before you have this perpendicular to the actual valve itself we'll turn the engine now Wrong way. And we will. So the gap says. It's supposed to be 0 0.08 of a gap. Where is that now? So this is the maximum gap it can be. And that just goes straight through. So I think from when I measured this before, it was 1.3. So let's just try that. That's 1.3 here. 1.3 is the maximum gap of that. So right, using a simple bit of formula now, um, simple maths, we know that this gap here is now 0 0.13. The maximum gap, change my arm, it's getting tired. The maximum gap can be 0 0.08. And the minimum gap is 0 0.03. It can't be any tighter than that. Basically, your valve shim needs to have room to slide around and to rotate. So that's why they say it needs a gap of 0.03. Bit of maths now. 
let's forget about all these zeros and everything, let's make it as simple as possible. A gap of 1.3, subtract 0 0.3, that's the minimum gap needed, will leave me an overall gap of 1. Put zeros back in, that means that I need to increase my shim size by 0 0.1, if that makes sense. So the next thing I need to do now is find out what size valve shim I've got in this already. Um, two things, that's where this comes handy. Uh, your valve shims should have measurements on them already, but if they're worn out for any reason, then of course you need one of these to figure out what they are. So this is where this little nifty tool comes in. Basically what you do is make sure that your, let me find something to point with, make sure that this little groove here is at the front, because basically you're going to have to use something to pop your little shim out. Put this in here, keep a little notch at the front, and then it should slot in, and then when you rotate this down, you'll see that your, let me try and do this with as much light showing, valve seat gets pushed down and then your shim should be there for you to just pop up. This is the tricky bit, you can use a magnet if you want, if you have a magnet, if you don't, you can simply use some pliers. Try to do this the wrong way around so I'm not blocking the camera. Here we go. Ah, I dropped the flipping thing. And here we go, this is your valve shim. So as you can see, there was a little number on this. I can see two point something five. You can see that there was two point something five there. But anyway, back onto that. This is where we get the little micrometer, the little measuring tool. Make sure it's at zero, open it up. Put the pincers down. And there we go. 2.65, so we know that's 2.65 shim. Excellent. Using the maths that we had before, which I'm gonna put up here, 2.65 add 0 0.1 equals 2.75 so we need a 2.75 valve shim to go in here. Now I know for a fact from checking all these shims before that I have a 2.75 shim on one of these other valves here so I can simply do a swap and replace here rather than getting a new shim. For these other ones though we're going to have to go through every single one, check the measurement on every single valve, order new shims which I have done and slot them in. It's a laborious process, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it really shouldn't take you more than an hour to do the whole lot. So let's do all that. And here you go, I thought I might as well show you this. So this has got numbers on this, is a 2.8. So with all the valve shims now done and sorted, I know that there's one thing down at least. So valve shims are done, next to be done, two things, uh, sorting the jets out and sorting out the electronic ignition. So uh, depends which one comes through the post first is the job I'm going to be doing next. I'm hoping it's the electronic ignition, it's, it's the simplest of the two jobs. And then once that's in place, I can actually test the jets as I'm changing them and all sorts. So it means that it's a, a quick job at least. One step closer, I'm going to try and get this bike on the road, my god it'd be so nice. But I mean all in all, it's it's nearly there, it's coming along as well. So if you like what you see, subscribe as usual, follow me on Instagram, and as well if you want to support the cause, visit the shop at furtherbuildingindustries.com. These t-shirts here, the Built Not Bought t-shirts, they're selling pretty well and they're going pretty fast at the moment, so don't forget to check them out as well. Next week there's going to be more videos on the GS and the CX, so that's all to come and hopefully we can start doing some motor vlogs soon. One of these bikes will be on the road really soon, so I'll see you next week.